Now let's talk about negations. The negation of a true statement is false and the negation of a false statement is true. For example, Alejandro has a valuable baseball card. The negation of that statement is Alejandro does not have a valuable baseball card. These two statements are in fact negations of each other. They have the opposite truth value in every scenario. So here are the two possible scenarios. Let's suppose he does have a baseball card. Then to say Alejandro has a valuable baseball card would be true, and to say he doesn't would be false. On the other hand, suppose he doesn't. Then to say he does would be true, and to say he doesn't, I mean, to say he does would be false, and to say he doesn't would be true. Opposites. Sometimes it's a little bit um, trickier than that, and we're going to look at some different scenarios. First example we're going to look at, the earth revolves around the sun. How would you write the negation of that statement? So if somebody said the earth revolves around the sun, and you disagreed with that person, what would you say? So one possible solution is to say it's not the case that the earth revolves around the sun. The phrase, it is not the case that, is sort of a catch-all. You can negate anything using that phrase. The earth does not revolve around the sun is also a way of negating that statement. Now, one common error when people work this particular problem is to think that if they reverse it and say the sun revolves around the earth, that that would be a negation. But these, in fact, are not negations of each other. To understand this, consider a scenario where both of them would be false. Let's suppose that in our universe, the sun and earth both revolved around Saturn. Then in this case, both of the statements would be false. The sun doesn't revolve around the earth, and the earth does not revolve around the sun. Since they don't have these, the opposite truth values in every scenario, these are not negations of each other. Now let's look at write the negation of the statement, all students take calculus. So if you disagreed with that statement, what would you say? So you have to remember whatever your statement is that you're thinking, it has to take into consideration it has to be the opposite truth value in every possible scenario. So we're going to analyze this in great detail just to justify our solution. We're going to suppose that there are three students in the class and there are the objects under consideration. And we're going to list all the possible scenarios. So let's say our students are Alicia, Bo, and Caden. It's possible that all of them take calculus. In fact, that was the uh, statement that we're analyzing. That would be the yes, 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 row one. But maybe Alicia and Bo take calculus, but Caden doesn't. That would be row two, and so on. So our statement is that they all do. That's only one scenario out of the eight distinct different scenarios. So the negation of this statement has to take every other possible scenario into consideration. Now, a lot of times people think the negation of all do is to say that none do. But notice that only covers one other scenario, the last one where nobody does, and leaves out all the ones in between. So a better solution that takes into consideration all the different scenarios is to say that at least one student does not take calculus. Could be two students, could be three, but at least one student is not taking calculus. Or Equivalently, some students do not take calculus, so in logic, some and at least one mean the same thing. So in general, the negation of all do is some don't. So how would you negate all children like ice cream? You would say, well, I think that there's at least one child out there that doesn't like ice cream, so some children do not like ice cream. Or if somebody said all politicians lie, you could say, well, there's at least one politician who does not lie. And you're contradicting the original statement. And you're taking into consideration every possible alternative. Now, going back the other way, if the original statement is some students take calculus, let's think about our chart. Some do would be the first seven scenarios there, where there's at least one student who's taking calculus. And the only thing left the only other possibility is 
the opposite. No students take calculus. So the negation of some do is none do. So if someone said some pastas are gluten-free and you disagreed, you'd say, well, I don't think so. No pastas are gluten-free. And if somebody said some politicians do tell the truth, in order to negate that, you'd have to conclude that no politicians tell the truth. Now, what we saw in these examples are words called quantifiers. Words like all, each, every, and none are called universal quantifiers because they describe characteristics that apply to everybody under consideration. We also saw existential quantifiers, such as some, there exists, or for at least one. So these are saying that they're they are guaranteeing the existence of something with that particular characteristic. When we negated all do, we used some do not. So notice that the negation of the universal quantifier all was the existential quantifier some with the negation not. And when we negated some do, which had an existential quantifier, we ended up with none do, a universal. So how would you write the negation of no children like green beans without using the catch-all? It is not the case that no children like green beans. Since no is a universal quantifier, no children like green beans, we're going to, we know that we're going to use an existential. So the negation of that would be that some do like green beans. In part B, we have some children do not like ice cream. If I disagree with that, then I'm saying all children do like ice cream. This concludes Logic Basics. We've covered statements, quantifiers, and negations. Look for other logic videos on these topics.